Okay. I guess <clears throat> we finally got it. I know Aman was here, but we had to redo. Gemini is here. Hello, Gemini. Can you hear me okay? Let me know if the sound and the resolution is okay. Aman is here. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about your question. I saw it, Aman. I saw it and I read it. It's just that we, I had a little problem with the, um, with the program, so I had to close it and come back. Avatar is here. Hello, Avatar. Let me know if you guys um, can hear me okay and see me okay. And let me know if the sound stops because somehow I have problems with this um, microphone sometimes, although it's an excellent quality, but somehow it closes. I mean, it malfunctions when I... Here. Okay. Yeah, and in regards to your question, Aman, the reason that you seem to be anxious about why you don't get a girlfriend while your friends get a girlfriend, I think it's because you're very acting very desperate, maybe not showing it to the girls, but in your head, you're so eager to score, to make that girl like you, to have something more than friendship with her, that she sees the desperation in your voice or in your behavior or your intention, which is nonverbal. And then she kind of treats you like you're too open and too available and too willing and you're no challenge for them or nothing mystery about you. And they being of the kind or at the age that they're not so confident about their own abilities and their own worth and value, they're looking to conquer something that is not so easily readily available. And when you are so available, it doesn't seem to them it's something that would give them the value if they could have you or be with you. Because you're just offering it on a silver platter with no qualifications necessary. You're a girl, I want you. <laughs> I know that's the way we think in our heads, but you're not supposed to have that, oh, please, please be my girlfriend, in your mind. They can feel it. They can feel the desperation. And it's like a fish that you're trying to catch and you keep pushing this lure in front of them. Come on, come on, please have it, please have it. <laughs> The fish says, what the hell are you talking about? I know you want to catch me, and I don't want to be caught. I want to think that I'm not caught, that I'm the one who's doing the catching. That's when they come and take the lure, take the food out of the lure thing. Otherwise, the fish will escape away because everybody wants to feel that they're the ones who are initiating. So you need to let the girls be free and just be friend with them without letting them see how desperate you are, how eager you are. So they feel that they're doing you a favor if they come to you, rather than thinking they're doing themselves a favor by convincing you that you want to be friends with them. So it's just a different philosophy and approach. Otherwise, the same girl that may not want to be friend with you, if you change your approach, she would want to be friend with you because she feels... It is her who is initiating this process rather than being subjected to someone's will who wants her to be his girlfriend. She wouldn't. But she wants to think she's the one who's choosing you to be her boyfriend. And that could work better. So you need to just move in with intention of being friend. 
being you. Not, I want something from you. Even though if you do, but that's not supposed to be getting out. <clears throat> You're supposed to behave as someone who is just there to interact and let them show you that they're interested more than just an interaction. But you go all out with all gears and weapons and armor. <laughs> here I am. I'm here to have you be my girlfriend. And she says, no way, <laughs> because that's the nature of woman. No is the default answer. So you need to, <laughs> you need to create a situation where they would think they're not saying no, they're actually making you say yes. And that's where things change a little bit. Anyhow, I think we are getting a little bit uh, over the level of this, <laughs> this course. <laughs> all right, all right. All right. Steve Matheson is here. It says, Mail 49 Ireland. It says, Glad to see you. You are back again regularly, Mehran. I rarely miss a broadcast, but tend to listen back rather than live. Your YouTube channel is such a great resource. Thank you very much, Steve. I really appreciate the, the feedback, and I am delighted that it makes a difference in people's lives and has a thing or two to share. Uh, lately, I've been a little bit busy with, the, uh, with my TikTok channel, which is mostly, uh, there are some uh, things about uh, thoughts and consciousness and so on and things that we usually talk. But recently, during the past month, I've been very active on it in regards to the situation in Canada and the, the infringement on our freedom and the Charter of Rights. And I've been mostly talking on political terms um, about our situation here. So I have been neglecting um, our live streams. But funny enough, uh, <laughs> I'm busier on the consultation end because there is less live streams, I guess, <laughs> which uh, perhaps that's the way to go. <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, however, I try to put in a live stream now and then to keep it balanced while I'm still uh, eager and uh, concerned about uh, the political situation in our country, the level of freedom and infringement and overreach of the government over our constitution and charter of rights, which are the backbone and foundation of every free society. And we seem to be not benefiting from that due to the present government's illegal behavior and overreach. So. Uh, that is one of the things that I'm sure everybody shares that around the world because most governments who are happen to be a franchise of uh, a doctrine, ideology of some uh, lunatic that has started this globalism concept and uh, therefore having people put in bounds and gags and cuffs because they do or don't want to do something, which... It's not the place to talk about it because these days, anything you say, their overreach just uh, cancels your show. <laughs> so, in other words, there we go. Uh, case, uh, uh, case in point, that we don't have the freedom as we did have uh, three years ago to speak what we want, to do what we want, and uh, to be protected by our constitutions wherever we are. These are the challenges of the day, and these are very important matters that the world should be concerned about who are these people who are infringing on our freedom and trying to reroute and reconfigure the way humanity has been advanced throughout the years and throughout the history by becoming less and less infringing on each other's rights and become more and more democratic and uh, freedom loving and respecting each other's lives and uh, values instead we now have a system that is being put in place which we hope it never will 
that is trying to regulate where we go, what we do, what we say, what we see. And these are exactly what we uh, and our forefathers and relatives from all different countries fought for in the World War II to bring down fascism and communism and be able to live in a free and just and balanced and uh, uh, society with liberty. And now they're going full circle and trying to bring that same thing that our forefathers sacrificed their lives to bring that freedom to us. They're trying to revert back what we fought against. They're trying to bring it back. And that is something that we should all be concerned. So having said that, let's get back to our questions here. And that was a little bit of a, uh, what is it? Um, recap of why I was, I've been busy with TikTok. So anyhow, my TikTok is Mind Seeks. Mind Seeks. Mind Seeks. It's my TikTok uh, channel, so you guys can check it out and um, at your leisure. And so I have Jot Rock Rocked. It says, hi, Mehran, and hi, everyone online right now. Guys, have you guys forgotten the protocol? There it is. Mail 41 Germany. Thank you for that, Jot or Jot. Uh, sorry if I can't pronounce some names properly because it's just is special to that pronunciation. I should learn it. And unless I hear it, I don't know how to pronounce it. And Gemini77 says, hey, hey, <laughs> hello. And Jod says, just a brief reminder, the Skype session with Mehran is just awesome. I had one and it changed so much in my mindset. Ah, thank you, Jod. <laughs> That's a free advertisement. It was not paid for. I just want everybody to know that. <laughs> Unbiased. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll give you five minutes extra talk next time. No, just. <laughs> All right. All right. And uh, <laughs> Aman says, why is it hard to being myself and slip into acting like somebody else? Why I don't be myself? Because you haven't learned that you're special, just like anybody else. You think what others do, since you have seen them get some kind of a response or reaction or result with it, you're convinced that their way is the way you should follow because you don't know if your way would work. Just because somebody's intention or action has brought some kind of a result for them, that doesn't mean it's the right way to go or it doesn't mean it's the only way to get a girlfriend. So you need to stop imitating others and simply let you be who you are because ultimately you want someone who likes you. And what better and how better to know you than you being you. So to begin with, be you. And do whatever it is that you want to say you like and then see if that girl is compatible with your you know, attitude and the way the things that you're interested in the say and want to do. And then you have a match, so to speak, other than otherwise you put up a front and you put up a certain, some kind of a, uh, an acting to be more accepted or more pleasant or I don't know, flashier, whatever it is that you think you might work with the girls. And then you got to keep that up all the time. And it's hard to be in a role all your life you got to be able to be to make it easy it's like a person who plays in a theater has to have a role but when it's off stage is himself he doesn't have to remember anything he doesn't have to follow a script just easy life is easy but if you have to follow a certain script that means you got to be in that role all the time then you, at one point, you find out what's the next script, what's the next line. I don't have a line because I only knew so much of how to imitate this other guy who got a girlfriend. So just be yourself so you would be the writer of your own script and you wouldn't have to write anything. You just interact with the girls. And if they like you, great. If they don't, then that's not the right one. You keep doing it until 
the one that actually appreciates you happens to become friend with you and then you got something hmm? just reduce that level of anxiety I gotta have one I gotta have one just cool it all right And we have Go Fast Clad 97. That's a long screen name, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Male 21 USA says, Does sexuality change in your lifetime? No, it doesn't. You're born as this, you're this. You're born as that, you're that. The rest of it is intrusive thought that shows up and it plays with your, which we have discussed that in hundreds of videos in two different main um, playlists. And you can check them out. Just go on my channel, key in on the search engine of my channel, HOCD, and you'll see an array of videos, a long list of videos. And see which one is the one that answers your question at the moment. And then pretty much anything you can think of, we've got a video on it, on that topic. And I also have the links of the well-known psychologists Dr. Philipson, Dr. Jan Rayner, Dr. Schwartz. These are all brilliant specialists in OCD and OCD subsets, which you can watch their videos and, you know, take your take off it, on it. And there is a video that I really highly recommend everyone to watch it, whether you have uh, OCD or subsets of OCD or not. It helps you to realize the separation between brain and you and the fact that you're not the brain, brain is not you, therefore you're not thoughts and thoughts are not you. So you won't be confused thinking whatever the brain conjures up or shows up in the screen of your head would be relevant to you. And you will understand that they're all irrelevant to you, meaningless to you, because brain is an organ. It's not you. Brain is like your liver, your kidney. It has a job to do. It makes thoughts, but it doesn't know what it does. It just makes thoughts for many reasons. It's got hours for me to explain, which we can do that on any uh, private one-on-one -on -one Skype consultation. But it's involved understanding of what's the purpose of the brain doing the hoopla and the havoc that it creates. And the, the, the short of the long is security. Physical security is something that we need. And psychological security, mental security. Brain also wants to be secured. Its way of securing itself is not the same way that our body feels secure. Its way of securing itself is in numbers, in different ways. One is through the order of life. It finds security in the routine, in the mechanical processes that you do during the day which is the order of life, and it also finds security in occupation, in being busy. Because brain, unlike the, our muscles and our limbs and our physical entity, doesn't have a place to fall and to know that it's there. So it's residing and it's home. Like shoulder is here. Arms are hanging onto the shoulder. Forearms are hanging onto the, this part of the arm. And the wrist is right here. Fingers are here. Ears are here. Everything has a place here. So physicality gives security and you're in your apartment, the door is locked and you're a good part of town. So through a safe physical environment, you find physical safety. But the brain doesn't find safety in physical area because it doesn't have a place in your body. It's virtual. It's all over the place until you teach it that it can have a place in the body. That's a training of its own, which is in my book, Me, My Psyche, and I, explained how. But until you do that, you got to understand that the brain does not have a place in the body by default. Therefore, it is always scattered around, and it's in doing some kind of a thought or memory being here and there in order to find in the order and the discipline and the routine of a memory 
or a function or something that it's thinking to create that security for itself to find a place to be. And that's why it's constantly going here. And by this going here and there and not having a place to relax and remain, it hits on different in, uh, inventory in the consciousness, which includes all kinds of topics, lifestyles and events and products and inventory and discussions and scenarios that exist in life and makes thoughts about it. And none of those thoughts are your thoughts. They're thoughts of the brain for its own purposes. But because it's mounted on your head, you think it pertains you. And then you become hot and bothered and try to figure out why is this thought showed up? Does it mean something about me? Does it describe me? And you rise and you try to fight with it. And that fight is the occupation that the brain is looking for to find security, a place to be, not to be scattered all around. That what bamboozles you and makes you think that this conversation needs to take place where, in fact, you need to ignore it. You need to allow all kinds of thoughts exist because none of them are relevant to you. The only thoughts that is useful to you is the thoughts that you actually go into the consciousness, pick up an inventory topic, and put it in the apparatus of the brain and do something with it with its calculation of something, inventing something, learning something, accomplishing something, planning for something. These are all your thoughts. But the rest of the 80, 90,000 thoughts a day that is created by the brain, it's not your thoughts. So when it appears in your head, don't entertain it as if it's yours and you got to explain it or you got to wonder about it, you got to question it. No, none, zero. That was the very scientific way of I could put it together. It's the last tone, you know. That's very French, yeah. So <laughs> now you know <laughs> what this whole thing is all about. So HOCD is also about, on top of what I just said, another uh, reason that it shows up is because of the malfunction of the signaling system of the brain, which that has a different way of, uh, you know, discussion about it. It has to do with the midbrain uh, basal ganglia where there is striatum where there are the um, goal finding center reward center and habit center are all there which in there there's a lever called caudate nucleus which when it malfunctions it's designed to to shut down intrusive thoughts but when it malfunctions in its signaling system it doesn't do its job so all the nonsense and all the irrelevant thoughts that shows up in every human being's brain during the day, 80, 90,000 times a day, it doesn't go away. It dissipates when caudate nucleus doesn't work properly as it should, as it's designed to. So that thought hovers. And when it's hovering, it's not dissipating as it's supposed to. You think, oh, it's something to do with me. Now I've got to solve it. What is this? And then it, of course, goes to all kinds of other tangents, especially hitting you with what's most important to you, which is your identity, and always HOCD is opposite of what you are. There is never an intrusive thought that is actually complementary to you, because that's not intrusive. So every HOCD that suggests anything about you, then you can be damn sure that you're opposite of what that HOCD is suggesting because that's how HOCD works. Okay, having said that, I don't want to turn it into a lecture. Let's go on to other topics here as we see a question here. Oh, I wanted to put this video for you guys that I suggest everybody to watch it to understand the concept of separation between you and the brain. And that is the foundation of understanding why None of these nonsense that shows up in your head has anything to do with you because you are not the brain and brain is not you. And for that very reason, I have put a video together a long time ago, which is based on the findings and the report of Dr. Ignar in regards to experiments that the brilliant neurosurgeons and neuroscientists have done. These are uh, award-winning um, um, echelon type of uh, research that it is research of Dr. Uh, Spiri, Dr. Penfield, Dr. Owen, Dr. Leibet, 
and the experiments are so interesting to learn and that's how not just by philosophical point of view since the aristotle time it's been proven that brain is not you're not the brain now the modern science through neurosurgery and neuroscience have proven beyond the shadow of doubt scientifically that there are aspects of mind and you that the brain cannot even reach let alone be your boss or be you hmm? so let me put that um that link here for you <clears throat> There we go. This is the one that I really would like everybody to take a look when you have time. Take them some tea or coffee or your favorite beverage and watch this. It's 45 minutes or so. It's not short, but it's got it packs lots of information about how your psyche works and how you can be bamboozled by not knowing enough about it. Hmm? So there we go. It's brilliant experiments. The uh, Nobel Prize uh, echelon of experiences by these famous neurosurgeons that have done the work for you to be free. Free of your thoughts and free of your mind and free, living free, with peace and tranquility. By knowledge of what the brain consists of, what it does and what its shortcomings and malfunctions are, you would be free. Because you would know this is not pertaining to you. This is just what brain does. And it's, it's a machine like any other machine malfunctions. <clears throat> and the man says there's a girl I like, but she keeps coming and keeps coming on and off. I mean, sometimes showing attitude and sometimes trying to seek my personal attention to her. Anyways, I kind of like her, but too, but I heard she goes to too many days. So, so what? So you're one of them. Enjoy. What are you, you, you are looking for a wife or are you looking for a date? She goes on many dates. I mean, if you could, you would too, wouldn't you? So you be one of those dates. Enjoy yourself. <laughs> you want to own her? You're 19, aren't you? Just go on dates. Doesn't matter. You're not going on an interview for finding a wife. You're going on a bloody date. That's it. Your expectation is where it shouldn't be. That's why you don't get a girlfriend. Because you're looking at them as a wife material. No. Look at them as a friend and a date. No. It's a nice looking girl. It's a girl that you have things in common and you just go out and have tea, coffee, dinner, whatever, hang around, laugh. Don't expect anything. Don't expect a kiss. Don't expect sex. Don't expect anything. Just hang around. Learn what women is all about. And then if the opportunity arrives, you can sense it. Then, you know, you go for it. But don't go in there. Oh, tonight, what should I do? What can I do? What do I have to do in order to get a kiss? No. Tonight, go have fun. Go have dinner. See how delicious the food is. That's it. The actual having a woman sitting with you and you have dinner, that itself makes the food more delicious. And that's all you want. Just to experience the delicious food when there's a woman sitting with you. That's all. You don't want a kiss. You don't want anything else. If that happens, thank God, gravy. If didn't, that wasn't your plan. Then you won't be disappointed. You won't be trying too hard. Just because you want to get something. No, you want to get nothing. You just want to take her out, be a nice gentleman, pleasing, be yourself. She likes you, she likes you, she doesn't, the hell with it. Next. Just enjoy yourself. Be a gentleman. Not overly, like don't be too formal or anything. Just, just be yourself. Don't put them on pedestal, but don't disrespect them either. Yeah, of course, go for it. It's okay. What's the ma most happens? She rejects you. She doesn't want to go out with you again. Oh, big deal. Another one. Next one. Who died and left her to be the last girl that you should be approved by? 
Cool. Don't make a big deal out of it. All right. <clears throat> Who else do we have here? You know, guys, you guys contemplate on your questions because we have no more questions here. I'll make some tea. Maybe I'll give you something to watch for a second, and I'll be right back. Subscribe on my channel, visit my channel, and go through the videos that you might be interested in. Mindthatseekstruth.com is making it one step away to talk to me one-on-one -on, -one on Skype and discuss what concerning you. I'll talk to you soon. Well, we too, like the iceberg, have thousand times bigger powers that is not visible, and we must. Why? Is it something we're rambling on and I expect you to accept it? Or is there actually another power within us? Would you come and help me out? Okay. What I want you to do is put your hands underneath my arms uh -huh. and just lift me up. There we go. Okay, now. That's my physical part, right? Mm. Same thing. Again, with that. just want to see if there's any difference. Go ahead. Now, go ahead. Now, this, go ahead, when you're ready. Go ahead. So you see, this is different than what he was doing, and I'm not really doing anything. Doing anything. You're convinced? Yeah. So are you guys convinced that there is something other than, thank you. Yeah, thank nice. you very much. Okay, until the water boils, we can continue our chat. Let's see, we have a new question here. <clears throat> ah, Mona is here, says, hello, Mehran Jun. Hello, Mona Jun. Where have you been? How have you been? How is UK? Are they back into civilization or are they trying to bamboozle people? All right. Oops, what happened? You know, once I hit my hand on one of these things, I don't know how to get them out of here. Like I get one of these questions shown up here and then well, maybe I put this up. That's better. <laughs> and I don't know how to remove that, so at least put something. So, guys, I'll be here for another maximum 30 minutes, because then I want to go for a workout, and before it gets too late. So if you guys have any questions, hit me with it. And Ash is here, says, Mehran, I've missed you, brother. Well, hello, Ash, I'm here. Yes, I explained earlier in the discussions here why I've been absent, uh, been busy with the, the political end of the uh, spectrum here in Canada. Uh, we have lots of uh, stuff going on, shit going on here. And uh, he says, uh, have you really been making TikTok videos? Yeah, a lot of them. Probably the best place to be to do it as there are certainly a lot of mental people there. <laughs> but these days, uh, TikTok is uh, in, in, in what I am uh, sequenced for is about the political situation in in Canada and the overreach of the government. And my videos, uh, although I started a few years ago, just a few uh, short videos on thoughts and 
consciousness and fear and so on that as we usually talk but my the latest uh, activities on TikTok during the past month which has you know produced I don't know many many videos uh, the videos are short there like maybe each segment is maximum five minutes but I had to do in different parts maybe but it's been mostly geared toward uh, the uh, Charter of Rights and Constitution and the freedom of rights and uh, our freedom and the you know the overreach of the government and all these other things that probably you guys have been hearing uh, from throughout some mediums the mainstream media does not talk about the events of Canada the way it is even our own media here the television states run televisions uh, are not truthful and they don't do justice to what is happening so uh, my program on TikTok has been totally different than what we discuss here because of the urgency of the matter and the you know severity of the situation here and again I put uh, my TikTok for the ones who want to check it's mind seeks on TikTok so you're welcome to check it out Ash says, I have a question, and it's a deep and philosophical one, my friend. So the question is, why am I such an asshole? Hmm. Have you directly asked that from the asshole? Because <laughs> <laughs> you got to be face to face. And since it's very difficult to be face to face to the source of the problem, then you can never solve it unless <laughs> you analyze it properly. So, so I suggested, and he says, I know all about Trudeau and his use of the emergency powers and all. Okay. Freezing people's bank account, etc. He's really overstepped the mark. Uh, but but what's crazy is that people are allowing it to happen. In fact, no. <laughs> he had to reverse it very quickly in two days. Like when he came out, so oh, he's emerging. <laughs> so he put that act in because he just simply didn't have the manners to have dialogue. And he smeared the people who were uh, participating in constitutional protected activity, which was demonstrating peacefully and expressing their dissatisfaction with the government's overreach and then two days later when even there was no more truck in the ottawa city and no more bouncy bounce for the kids or barbecue or even dancing or anything any peaceful demonstration after the police actually ran them over by horseback and ran some people over and also beat them. We have visual evidence of that. And there was nobody in the streets. He still kept that going. But two days after, because people did a bank run, they lost trust in the government and lost trust in the banks they took the money out of the banks and he could see what kind of worm he had opened by his stupidity uh, therefore um he quickly turned us oh there's no emergency we 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 take that off because <laughs> naturally when people would do a certain peaceful actions within their rights and take their money out of the bank the banks feel the squeeze and they look at the government that you messed up so apparently i think our credit rating as a country as a last heard is changed and so he has done harm to the country in financial market as well so 
And so, in regards to why you're an asshole, It says, I love to have just a long old chat with you again, Mehran, one day. Would love to discuss politics, psychology, philosophy, and life with you, man. For sure. Uh, that was one of the intentions I had if the world would be normal and we wouldn't have to go through this whole bullshit of this uh, nonsense we've went through the past two years, gagging our mouth with some kind of a rag that has no scientific basis in preventing any thing to enter or exit if you can have breathing coming in and coming out that means other things such as any virus whatnot can also come in and go out. so whether you put this thing on or not if you can breathe that means the other stuff is happening too so it's just nonsense was a sign to condition us to be obedient and the distance was to keep us away from each other. So we won't be talking to each other, conversing. It has nothing to do with preventing anything of that sort. It's microscopic. It's not, <laughs> it's sub-microscopic. So it's not like it's going to stop because you've got a, you know, handkerchief on. Anyhow, that bullshit continues while people around the world in millions are actually demonstrating but mainstream media is part of the whole plan and it's not uh, reflecting it until just lately in some parts anyhow let's uh, hope that uh, the the video would not be <laughs> would not be um, screened uh, by our discussions because now we're living in a, a fascistic a world in general and the um, unfortunately uh, some mediums are helpful in the censoring the freedom of speech so <clears throat> these are all byproducts of fascism so let's go back to what we were doing here <clears throat> And Ash says, by the way, I noticed that HOCD symptoms reduce more and more. Our doubts seem to be to creep in more and more. I seem to doubt basically everything about myself. It's overwhelming. Yeah. But, you know, your knowledge about it should be a foundation for the change of your uh, perspective of this whole experience in other words once you have the seed in your knowledge you have to see a plant a seed of accurate knowledge about the behavior of the brain and malfunction of the brain and why these things happen then you won't attribute it to what the hocd actually wants you to think in fact you actually know that it is hocd's brand and plan of action that makes you think the way you do not that there is anything that could ever threaten you as your identity, orientation, or choices are. It's just the malfunction that it is now known to you by the knowledge of it. And that seed of knowledge always comes and protects you from being bamboozled by doubting and feeling that doubt has any logic or fact to it. You will also know while you're doubting, you know, that's a doubting as a result of the seed of HOCD and the seed of knowledge that you have planted about HOCD helps you to get out of that doubt and doubt the doubt. <laughs> so, and then move on. So in other words, not give credibility to the doubt and just focus on what your choices and vetoes are doesn't matter what comes to the brain doesn't matter what feels or shows or tries to persist as fact what matters is your judgment and your choice and veto that's it it doesn't matter what doubt whatever doubt comes what is is that my choice would i want it to be no okay 
What is my veto? Okay, that's it. Okay, done. Then it doesn't matter what the brain suggests, what HOCD suggests, what doubt shows up. You always revert back to, is it my choice? Do I want it to be? Is it my preference? What is my preference? I go with that. What is, the, what is it I would wish it to be? I go with that. That's my choice. That's my veto. That's my choice. Based on my choice, this other one is vetoed. That, the brain cannot interfere because you ultimately have a plan. And your plan is, what I doubt, do I wish it to be true? No, then that's my choice. And because that's my choice, I veto the doubt. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we have Fabio is here says recovering from nine year relationship it's like a sickness <laughs> not recovering from a nine year relationship well if it's a sickness don't get into relationship <laughs> It's like saying, I'm recovering from a soccer game I played and I fell. Oh, in soccer game, there's a falling. There's fouls and there's falling and tripping and all that. So it's part of the game. So when you come out of a relationship, don't say that, oh, the relationship must be smooth sailing and no problem. That's what relationship is. Falling, problem, you know, fights and arguments and, you know, dissatisfaction and discrepancies and disagreements and uncompatibility and all this shit is part of that whole concept of relationship so don't think oh i'm such a bad luck i have a relationship relationship is that good and bad in it so it's not like oh it's devastating it's abnormal i no that is what relationship is sometimes has problems and often has lots of problems why because human psyche is conditioned differently for every individual. Just imagine through childhood, all the things that have been conditioned in your consciousness, it cannot be the same as the conditioning that the other person received in their consciousness. So when the you two get together, all this girl has had different kind of upbringing, different values and, and conditioning in the consciousness. And you had the same thing, regardless if you lived in the same city, the same block or two different countries. The consciousnesses which has been enriched, uh, nourished, nurtured by different elements in life, different parents, they had different consciousness, different teachers, different societies, different rules and different cultures and customs. All of that has resulted in the conditionings you had, you've received in your consciousness. And these two consciousnesses are having a relationship. Naturally, they have received different conscious, different conditionings, so they are different. So they will be having conflicts it's normal to have conflicts and divisions when you are in a relationship with another person but this is this is what it is because the relationship doesn't take place between your visual sight of the aesthetics of someone but it happens in the consciousness and since the consciousness are conditioned differently they are of different background. They are of different bases and foundation. Therefore, the compatibility is going to take a while until they realize the changes, the differences, and they realize the compatibility changes and differences, and they realize the compromise that they need to do, understand each other, prove to each other, have certain kind of a, a, um, agreeable policies and approach uh, style, and then eventually it will be more and more compatible. That's like that's why most people in their older end of their relationship, I mean, like, I don't know, 20, 30 years further, mostly are more of a... Um, synchronized way of dealing. They kind of understand, have conditioned, accepted that in the other person and they kind of deal with it in the way they have been they have found it's workable and then it becomes smoother but at the beginning everybody's fighting for you know uh, um survival of uh, survival of their individuality i gotta prove to her what i am and she says i gotta prove to him what i am i am this i'm that and none of us are anything but we're just trying to 
overwhelm the other so we can have our way, our ego, me. But instead of finding a way to be we, we try to be me, and then it's two me's together are going to be, you know, problem. Anyhow. <laughs> <clears throat> Um, and says, <clears throat> your relationship, cheating ex. Uh -huh. It's been four months since we split, and I removed her family from my life and feel like shit because it's not their fault. My professional work is taking a hit. Yeah, these are all very serious if you don't know how to handle it and it's always difficult to handle it <clears throat> now, obviously most parents will side their own kid even if the sh if she cheated they're kind of embarrassed and they want to justify that by not calling it for what it is and instead trying to put the blame on something else that, oh, no, our daughter will not do that. It must have had a reason. Oh, they come up with the reason. And that whole thing is why you would want them out of your life. And you did fine if that was the case. But if it wasn't, then you didn't have to. However, at one point in time, if you're not with her, then there's no sense of being having a relationship with those parents either because eventually she's going to find another guy. And then it's going to be just the whole bullshit of, you know, She's got a boyfriend, and the parents are now, and then you're there. You become suddenly you who were the center of attention or important person because you were, you know, with their daughter. Now, suddenly, you are a third wheel. Uh, it's weird. So, the fact that you cut them off, it's not a bad idea because you've probably made up your mind that you don't want to be with this girl who has cheated on you, right? Naturally, who would? And if you have made that decision, well, why should you hang around the parents? Unless uh, you have children with her, and then the parents are grandparents. And this is unfortunate, but this is what happens these modern days, that um, women are not so loyal to their men once they get married. And they still are looking for attention. They're still looking for their covering up their shortcomings as they get older or whatever it is that they may think they want in order to bring certain kind of a balance to their life. And they're under the illusion that another guy will do the job. In fact, it's just the attention instead of really being content in their lifestyle and what they're accomplishing in life, they want the responsibility of feeling content come from attention of others. That's why they lose the interest in their own present relationship and they respond to an attention or overtures that another guy is making on them because women like attention and other guys are always looking for a possibility for, um, you know, for um, sex. So they will obviously would pay attention and would, um, become very pleasant and in comparison it looks like they're more interested in the woman than her husband or her present boyfriend because with the present boyfriend or her husband the situation is kind of accepted and normalized and they're together so there's challenge is less and the attention is not novel but when somebody else pays attention suddenly they say oh I'm wanted I'm 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 hot somebody else pays but that somebody else given the same time frame as you had with your husband or with this boyfriend of yours it would have ended up again feeling the same and you would now be open to attentions you might receive from other entities other men around and then but however however you look at it the one that you've been with is normalized not novel but the one that you're not with even though not even qualified as much as half of the man that you're with seems so exciting. Why? Because it's just something you measure your validity and affirmation by, which is a wrong way of to be, uh, uh, you know, looking at that to, to affirm yourself. But that's what 
happens in the psyche of most uh, people. And that's not limited to women. also happens to men. They want to still feel young and wanted. So the attention of another woman to them, it's very uh, liberating or very reassuring. And the same thing for women. And that's the thing that you guys are up against. It's not that this the attention of the new guy to this woman is extraordinary and better than the one that she's already getting attention from her husband or her boyfriend. It's just because it's novel. It's another kudos and everybody likes a thumbs up. So that's another thumbs up, so to speak. If you look at it that way, then you will know it's going to be short-lived because even that you go on for a few months and you'll find the same groove of life. The problems and challenges remain the same. You cannot solve natural happenings and challenges of life by simply finding another source of pleasure and trying to solve those challenges by a new pleasure because that pleasure also, it's joy at the beginning. It's exciting. But when it comes pleasure, when in other words, it becomes sort of your routine, then again, it loses its effect over the challenges that you're facing. And again, you fall, you feel depressed that, okay, now again, I don't have anything. Now what are you going to do? Look for another attention, another relationship. That's going to be a domino effect and never ending. And you will never be able to deal with the actual challenges on your own. And you're always looking out, outside for somebody to give you attention, to distract you rather than you deal with the challenge and overcome it. All right. Having said that, let's go to Happier says, Hi, Mehran. A male 30 from Ohio. Ohio? Ohio players. <laughs> that was my time university. Skin tight. I remember that. I danced to it so much in, <laughs> in the discos. <laughs> it was such a, such a successful group, Ohio players. All right. So I don't know if they were from Ohio or not, but uh, nevertheless. Uh, thank you for joining us. It says, I need your advice on my anxiety. Uh-huh. says, I got a job offer, and they offered me more money than initial offer after the round of interviews. I thought you always negotiate because companies tend to lowball salary thinking you would negotiate. Depends on the market, not always. Says, well, I tried to negotiate higher. I got rejected and said the original offer was highest they could go. I'm going to still accept the offer with this hospital, but getting anxious that I negotiated. What if HR and my future boss think I am greedy? No, not at all. Asking for negotiation even after they up my salary. Nah, let them decide that. Why are, you, why are you speculating? Why? I don't want to start on wrong foot. No, you won't. You, it's your right to negotiate. You know, I would have negotiated differently. I would say, okay, that's fine. I accept that. But I would like to have a increase of or review of my uh, salary like every two years or every whatever, some kind of a thing. That would have been probably acceptable to them because they would see they're getting what they're offering. There's no negotiation done by you, so you accepted it. But you just want a review to be every two years or every whatever. And that would have been a better way of negotiating than coming up with the higher end. But you haven't lost anything. That's expected for someone who is caring about his career and his life. That's your right to negotiate, and you did, so you, you didn't accept. That's fine. You accept this, whatever it is, on the table, and deal with it later in, in your review. Once they're reviewing, they increase, and then you can maybe hackle again. Doesn't get you fired. Just means you're hackling. If they accept, great. If they didn't, but make sure you have another possibility somewhere that if they were not, compliance to you know they were not able to accommodate you and uh, they were unreasonable in their increase in salary 
then you actually can move on to the next uh, opportunity. Don't don't always negotiate with empty barrel. Hmm? So have a few actual options under your belt before you go into that. So that will be easier to negotiate. Um, it's a graveyard ship. Yeah, well, let's, listen, go in there, do the graveyard ship for, I don't know, a year or whatever it is that it takes, then start bitching. Not right up there. Because right now you want that job, right? It's a better pay than whatever you are getting right now. So take that. And then you move on from it. Get on the stairs and then we'll deal with, uh, you know, climbing up. And Happier says, by the way, this anxiety rumination always happens to me. I do one thing. I ruminate about the road not taken. Ah road not taken doesn't exist so focus on the road you're driving on road not taken what does that do whether you ruminate or come up with any kind of a, a decision it doesn't exist you're not on that road so it's a waste of time focus on where you are mindfulness and rumination are opposite of each other mindfulness is when you are thinking about what you're doing at the time that you're doing it and you're paying full attention to what it is that you're doing. Rumination is you're thinking about something that you're not doing. <laughs> what the fuck for? <laughs> Where's it going to go? It's just going to go, okay, I'm going to fixing something in virtuality when it's not going to affect the actuality. But let me do that anyhow because it makes me feel like, oh. because you know what? We want dopamine. And if we can't get it in the actual life, we go into the memory or we go into virtual life in the brain, which nothing is real, but we create some kind of a satisfactory situation in there by modification of what was, that it is not, but that's how we handle something, but we were not satisfied with it. So we modify it in the virtual world of the brain. And since the brain is a virtuality, it believes that that virtuality that you're actually changing is an actuality, so it behaves as if it's an actual, and it releases dopamine. And you say, ah. So you're actually in need of dopamine to feel good. That's why you're ruminating. Otherwise, if there is no end result of release of dopamine after your rumination, you wouldn't be motivated to do it. But because you know the satisfactory end result of the scenario that you're creating your memory will result in a, ah, which gives you the dopamine, the good feeling, and that's what you want in life, then you keep doing it. Understand that you can get that, ah, by going and running a little bit or an exercise to create that endorphin and the dopamine and a feel good about and socializing brings the oxytocin neurotransmitters, then you will replace the rumination, which is in virtuality world, with an actual activity in the actual world, and you get that feeling, which is a legitimate and workable and truthful, efficient for about your reality of life, and you'll be more satisfied than having done something ruminating in a virtual world which you actually can't see an actual result to it so it's very short-lived dopamine if you actually do it something that is an actual world for what you're doing in the present moment then dopamine will also would be able to be reproduced every time you do that action and actually help you in achieving whatever it is that you want to achieve because it's all happening in the actuality in the actual world not fictitious so you little bit little by little you move away from rumination also when you are feeling that rumination which is uh, you know stems from needing for the dopamine do this a quick one remember we have two breathing system yeah one uh pre Batzinger complex which is your normal breathing system you know up and then in and out 
whether long or short, it's your normal breathing. But the other one is, is uh, parafacial nuclei. Parafacial nuclei is when you can actually breathe not according to the pre Butzinger complex, which is a normal breathing, but also able to coordinate your breathing while you're crying, laughing, or whatever, like, you know, <laughs> or <laughs> these are different kind of breathing system, but parafacial nuclei allows you to modify the involuntarily breathing system, which is through pre Butzinger complex. So in this way, there is a way that you can get rid of the anxiety in a quick moment by breathing two times using parafacial nuclei. You do Then breathe normally. If you all just do this, what I just did, a breathe in deep and a second breathe in and hold and then let out extensively, like let out. And then at the end of it, breathe normally. That already relaxes you down synchronizes your neurons and everything in your nervous system and makes you feel good which results in a dopamine secretion and total relaxation to the point you don't give a fuck about ruminating you're already good it's like a very interesting experience if you do it right you can see i'm just totally <laughs> just like the breathing <laughs> uh it's an amazing exercise that is all available to us but we hardly do it because we don't think it could be so simple. All right. So that takes care of your anxiety. And I ruminate about the road not taken and even blame on people thinking they did something on purpose. I personalize. I don't. Just, you know, just stop doing it. You know, really, honestly, just say, fuck it. I don't. I don't do it. I know what the brain says. It might be, I don't believe my brain. Why? Because I know the brain is fucked up. Why do you have to believe your brain? The problem starts when you start believing thoughts. That's the major problem in our lives. When you believe it, brain makes thoughts 80, 90,000 times a day and all bullshit, irrelevant to you, meaningless to you. But when you start believing it, that's when the problem starts. Allowing brain make thoughts is not a problem. That's fine. Just like you allow and accept that other people with different mentality and interests and whatnot can exist. They all can. All kind of products, all kind of lifestyles, all kind of uh, events and all kind of activities, all kind of industries, all kind of products. They all exist. You accept that. But you choose what you choose, what you prefer, and you veto what you don't. So that's how you negotiate what it is out there. You don't have to be in line with all of them or accept all of them or be involved in any of them or at all. You just allow them and accept that they exist, but you live by your choices and vetoes. Now, the same thing here. You allow thoughts to be, but you don't have to consider them. You just consider what thought seems to be usable or what doesn't, and you dub the rest of them, I don't care. Remember, when the brain is set out I thrown a question to it, it has several ways to deal with it. One is an instinctive response to a question which doesn't involve thinking. The other is when it involves configuring, using apparatus 
for calculation, figuring out something, producing something, designing something, planning something, and coming to a conclusion. And that, from the time the question is posed to the time that these configurations and conclusions achieved, in other words, the result of the question is apparent, that's called thinking. Now, at that time, when you come to an answer to a question, the conclusion and the calculations and figuring out process ends and you come to an answer, thinking stops. But there's another way that you can stop thinking. When a question is posed to you, instead of going through the function of calculations and figuring out period to come to a conclusion so the thinking stops, you can simply say, because once you do the calculation and you figure out in the middle of it that you don't know the answer, you can't find the answer, you don't have a way or the knowledge to find the answer, you say, I don't know. When you say, I don't know, even though you haven't received the conclusion or the answer to the question, the thinking stops because you dubbed it, commanded it, concluded, there's a conclusion, you concluded, I don't know. That stops thinking. Now, there's another way. Before you even take steps to use any calculation configuration to come to any conclusion to find out whether you can or you don't know, just say, I don't know and I don't want to know. Again, thinking stops because you gave a mandate to the brain that I don't want you to do that calculation because I don't care. I don't need to know. So when you tend to think that you got to ruminate, say, I don't need to ruminate because I don't care about what the answer is. I don't want to. I don't want to change anything because nothing can be changed in the past and the memory and the memory is dead. The past is dead. The memory is dead. So why am I changing in there? Because whatever I do, I will redo it again because the result will not be permanent because it's in a virtual world. And I would not believe that the virtual world has a duration of actuality. Therefore, every time I think about it, I would redo the rumination. And in order not to do that, I simply refuse to go through that motion of ruminating because I know it would have to be redone because it has no longevity. So therefore, I simply refuse and say, I don't know. I don't want to know. And thinking stops. It doesn't push you to do the rumination because you told him, I don't want to know. Stops. So if you focus on this, your rumination is all based on trying to change something. When you say, I don't want to change, or I don't know, or I don't care, I don't want it then the thinking, the rumination will not start because you commanded it that way. Anyhow, I hope that helps you out from whatever I said. Aaron Louis 16 says, hey, Maron, hello, Aaron. Fabio says, anyone dealing with HOCD, I can offer my two cents. Okay. All right. Aaron says, um, "19 male from UK. Every time I try to ignore the thoughts, my brain tells me that I'm actually listening to them, and then I start panicking. Well, so what? You listen to them. So what happens? It's all virtual world. What happens?" Ultimately, you're the only one that can allow any thought to become an action or not. The thought by itself cannot become an action. 
it just threatens you, scares you. It's like you're walking in the dark and you hear something. Whoo! But it was just the sound of the air. But you're ready to be scared because it's dark. You don't know. It's unknown. But it was nothing there. So you're just under the under the impression that it would make any change to you. No, it wouldn't because it's a thought. The only thing that can allow a thought to become an actuality in the actual world and action is you. And as long as you don't allow it, it won't happen. So it doesn't matter what kind of thought shows up. And it's not about ignoring the thought. It's about accepting and allowing thoughts to exist. Because existing of something doesn't mean that I am part of it or I should be part of it or I would be part of it or I would be interested just because something exists. What does that, how the hell does that mean? There's so many kind of food of different kind exist in the world. But I do not choose. I only choose the food that I like. And I think the ingredients and the whatever nutritional value it is 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 suitable to me and my preference. So it doesn't matter what's out there. So many products out there. So many activities out there. So many lifestyles out there. But does it mean what? Just because they're out there, I would be part of it? No. I live by my choices and my vetoes. So I don't care what's out there. It's for whoever is interested in that. I happen to be not interested in certain products, certain fruit, certain food, certain activities, certain lifestyles, certain preferences, certain products. So, but I accept that everything can exist, but it's irrelevant to me, but exist. So what? Thoughts too. I allow and accept thoughts can be allowed. Thoughts can exist, but it's irrelevant to me because I still live by my preferences, choices, and vetoes. So what do I care? What kind of thought shows up? Ultimately, I'm the boss. Thought comes from brain and brain is an apparatus is an organ but i am the ultimate entity i choose i allow or i don't care but i accept and allow thoughts to exist because they exist that's what brain does it's like saying my intestines i should not allow to shit because that stinks that's bad i accept that that's what Intestine does. It shits. It's part of its function. And I have a way to deal with it. You know, we go to the bathroom, we clean up and come out. So, but the choice of thinking you're the shit because it's produced by your intestine, that's wrong because you're not shit. It's what intestine does. Accepting that you got to, what, become part of that shit or think that shit is you or eat that shit, well, that's your choice. Only you can allow it or not allow it. Thoughts too. All kind of thoughts can show up. But the fact that you are the thought, that's your choice. It's not the power of the thought or the brain being truthful or factual. It's just a thought, but you are responsible to choose it or not choose it. Prefer it or not prefer it. Choices and vetoes. It what you set aside and separates you from the brain. Brain can do what it does. Your intestine can do what it does. But you decide if it's in line with your values, something that you appreciate or something that you manage and deal with. You accept that it's the function of that organ. But it's not me because I am not my organ. Hmm? I use the organ for what I need it to do, what I need to accomplish. And then I choose and select if it's suitable for what I want to accomplish or not. If not, I let it be. If it is, I see how I can use it. That's all. So I'm not threatened by thoughts showing up. Show up. So what? Like everything else exists in the world. But I choose. Just because it exists doesn't pertain to me. Doesn't mean it's relevant to me. Same thing with thoughts. You're not the brain. Brain is not you. Hence, you're not thoughts. And thoughts are not you. You're the boss. You judge your thoughts. You live by your choices and vetoes. That's what you should know. All right. <sighs> okay, guys. It's been quite a bit here. And so I think it's time for me to end our conversation.
Milky Rocks. I need to know age, gender, where you come, when you're tuning in from, because I can't figure out the context of the question when I don't know what your gender is. Rahul is here, says, Hi, sir, 34, male India, says, Connecting with you after a long time, wife came at my place and stayed for 10 days and gone back to staying. She will come back, but it's been 45 days since she gone and didn't come back yet. I also not insisted her to come back. In fact, I have not contacting her and my daughter because now I'm tired of everything and letting go of her what she wants to do. I'm focusing on my career. Good for you. Excellent. Enough is enough. You've done what you could do and you're open to it and she comes back, she comes back, she goes, she goes. Just let it be as if it doesn't matter. Just focus on making money and provide for your daughter and be the best father you can be and let her come to her own senses. If she does, great. If she doesn't, well, so be it. But at this moment, you don't have to get angry. You don't have to tell her what to do. You don't have to do anything. Just to focus on your career, make money, and be the good father you can be to your daughter. And uh, if your wife asks for something, if you can manage it, help her. Otherwise, just leave it. Leave it until she comes to her own judgments. Otherwise, the rest of it is not going to work out. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, guys, uh, it's time for me to... Oh, female and 18. Um, I'm sorry, Milky, it's time for me to go. I need to attend to some of the things, which is, you know, I got to go work out <laughs> before it's too late. And I've been sitting for a while. And um, uh, you guys know that I have a site, mindthatseekstruth.com, www.mindthatseekstruth dot com and um and uh, milky you gotta let me know where you're tuning in from which country and you guys can go and make an appointment for a one-on-one -on -one skype consultation and by all means we can discuss whatever it is that concerning you but uh this is the time that i can uh, allow for today it's about one hour and a half almost and um So I'm sorry if I couldn't get to all your questions, and I know if I enter discussion about Milky. Milky, for now, there are uh, discussions that I have had on the two live stream, two uh, playlists on my YouTube channel. Uh, intrusive, transient, intrusive thoughts, transient thoughts, OCD, HOCD, negative thoughts is one, one uh, playlist. And the other one is about the separation of my brain and you. And that is the foundation of understanding that you're not the brain and brain is not you. And that will help you to understand all these things that you're talking about. Uh, and that is called intrusive OCD, HOCD short videos. None of them are short, but it's there to lure you in to watch them, <laughs> I guess. Anyhow, so uh, you can watch those. And if you don't have your answer, you can go on my site, make an appointment. And we'll discuss it. And if not, then the next live stream, hopefully, you'll be one of the first that we could answer your question. In the meantime, I want to say I love you all. Thank you very much for being here, giving the opportunity to share a thing or two with you. You can always check my uh, TikTok, if you like, Mind Seeks, and to see what stuff I talk about over there, mostly political stuff about Canada and the situation we're in right now. Otherwise, I look forward to our next live stream. In the meantime, be good to yourself and to the others. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Subscribe on my channel, visit my channel, and go through the videos that you might be interested in. Mindthatseekstruth.com is making it one step away to talk to me one-on-one -on, -one on Skype and discuss what's concerning you. I'll talk to you soon.